Good morning. Today I'm going to read chapters 5 and 6 in this book, Ballpark Mysteries, The Missing Marlin. So remember what happened last time. The end of the chapter, Marlin, the baseball fish, was missing. <clears throat> so we're going to pick it up here at chapter 5. Critters and Creatures. That's crazy, Kate said. Mike started pacing back and forth. I know, but think about it, he said. He ticked off the reasons on his fingers. Uncle Oliver took out a lot of insurance on the fish. He doesn't want to call the police. He could be in danger of losing his job with the Marlins, and Panther Park is having money troubles. It all fits together. So remember, they're trying to figure out if Uncle Oliver took the fish for insurance money. Kate sank into the chair. She shook her head. I don't know, she said. I really don't think Olive, Uncle Oliver is stealing his own fish. Well, we have to consider everything, Mike said. Someone is taking the fish. Okay, Kate sighed. Let's keep an eye on him at the game. When they arrived at the stadium later that morning, Mrs. Hopkins headed to the press room. Uncle Oliver led Mike and Kate to the fish tanks behind home plate to check for Kate's turtle. Kate watched their uncle carefully for any clues. The stadium was empty except for workers preparing for the day's game. Batting practice wouldn't start for another hour. You said you saw the turtle in that tank, right? Uncle Oliver pointed to the tank along the first baseline. Kate nodded. The three of them scanned the water from top to bottom and left to right. They saw lots of fish and bright coral, but no turtle. Kate poked the glass in the middle of the tank. It was right there, she said. I definitely saw a small green turtle right there. It was a little bigger than my hand. Where did it go? Uncle Oliver unlocked the long green top of the tank with a key. He scanned the water from the top. Still, they saw nothing except fish. Uncle Oliver shut and locked the top. I know you think you saw a turtle, Kate, he said. But there's no turtle in there now. Kate scuffed at the red clay of the warning track with her sneaker. She hated to be wrong. Just then, a voice called to Uncle Oliver from the stands. A man wearing a Marlin's warm-up jacket and a tall man wearing a bright green shirt came down to the infield. Uncle Oliver shook, his, shook hands with the man in the Marlin's jacket. Mike and Kate, this is Buck Thompson, the Marlin's team president, he said. Mike and Kate said hello to Buck. Then the man in the green shirt stepped forward. He slapped Uncle Oliver playfully on the back. Look what the cat dragged in, he said. He gave Uncle Oliver's shoulder a tight squeeze. Uncle Oliver winced. He cleared his throat. And this is Don Dixon, Uncle Oliver said. He runs Critters and Creatures, the biggest fish and pet store in town. I think he's a bit jealous that the Marlins hired me to raise their fish. Don Dixon snorted. Oh, don't get ahead of yourself, he said. They hired you, but they can also fire you. After all, Critters and Creatures is the best fish and pet store in Miami. And what does that mean, Uncle Oliver asked. Don Dixon waved his hand. Well, we don't have a nature center to run, so we can focus on the fish, he said. Anyway, I'm just here for the game. Let's not talk shop. Good idea, Uncle Oliver said. I have to leave for a business meeting soon anyway. He said goodbye to Buck and Don Dixon. Then he nodded at Mike and Kate. I'll see you two back at the house later. Ned will be by soon to check the tanks before the game. You can help if you want. As Uncle Oliver headed for the exit, Mike and Kate slipped into a couple of seats right behind the fish tanks to wait for Ned. Kate stared at Don Dixon. I don't trust him, she said. Did you hear how he talked to Uncle Oliver? Mike nodded. He was kind of mean. Don Dixon and the Marlins president continued their talk near home plate. After a few minutes, Mike nudged Kate. He pointed at Don Dixon. Look, they're leaving together, he said. Let's follow them. What about waiting for Ned, Kate asked. We already checked the tanks with Uncle Oliver, Mike said. We're not going to miss anything with Ned. I think we need to figure out what Don Dixon is up to. 
Don Dixon and the Marlins president left the infield and walked up the aisle. As they did, Mike and Kate followed. They pretended to play catch with Mike's tennis ball. When the two men reached the top of the steps, they leaned against the railing overlooking the park. Mike motioned for Kate to throw the ball high. The ball sailed over Mike's head and bounced into the seats just below the two men. Mike scrambled over the seats to get the ball. Hey, Kate, he called. I can't find the ball. Help me out. When Kate came over, Mike showed her the tennis ball in his hand, but he put his finger to his lips. Above them, behind the railing, Don Dixon and the Marlins president were talking. Oh, here's a picture of them. Ooh. And then down here are the kids. Mike and Kate pretended to keep looking for the ball. The first thing they heard was Don Dixon laughing. I know that Oliver's Nature Center is having some trouble lately, Don Dixon said. Who knows how much longer he'll be able to keep it going. Kate's fingers curled into a fist like this. Well, you know, we like, Uncle, we like Oliver a lot, but let me give you a key to the tanks, Buck said. It might come in handy for what we talked about. Thanks, Don Dixon said. Critters and creatures would be happy to take over if Oliver runs into problems. Hmm. So now we have some new evidence, maybe. Maybe Don Dixon has something to do with the fish that are missing, or I don't know. And now Don Dixon is trying to get the job of working at Marlins Park. Interesting. Okay, chapter six. So keep this all in your head, because... We're taking down clues, just like the kids are, to solve the mystery. Guppy goes fishing. This is chapter six. See? It's not Uncle Oliver. It's Don Dixon, Kate said, as they found their seats a few minutes later. He must be trying to cause problems for Uncle Oliver so he can get the Marlins' business. He's the one stealing the fish. They were sitting about ten rows behind home plate. A group of school children in bright purple t-shirts was next to them. All around them, the stadium was filling up. Maybe, Mike said, but Uncle Oliver is still a suspect because of that insurance. Well, I think it's Don Dixon, Kate said. We can look for clues at his pet shop. My mom could take us tomorrow. When the game started, Guppy Gomez ran out to the mound. The other Marlins players jogged out to their positions. The fans cheered. The first batter for the Arizona Diamondbacks took practice swings in the warm-up area. This is going to be great, Mike said. I can't wait to see Guppy pitch. Why do you call him Guppy? Kate asked. His real name is Gary Gomez. But they call him Guppy because he gets batters to go fishing, Mike said. That means he throws a lot of pitches outside the strike zone. It looks like a strike, so batter swing, but usually they miss or just hit little bloopers for outs. On the mound, Guppy was ready to pitch. He waited for the sign from the catcher. Then he twirled the ball in his glove to get it in the right position. He wound up and fired. The ball sailed toward home plate, but just before the plate, it dropped low and outside. The Diamondbacks batter swung anyway. Strike one! the umpire called. The catcher threw the baseball back to the pitcher. Guppy pitched again. This time, the ball sailed in higher, but it was still outside the strike zone. The batter swung and missed again. Strike two, the umpire called. Mike nudged Kate. See, he said. He's a master at throwing pitches that batters think they can hit, but can't. Guppy's third pitch was so low, it bounced on home plate. This time, the batter didn't swing. Ball one, the umpire called. Guppy's fourth pitch was perfect. He threw a fastball straight down the center, but the batter was too slow on his swing. Strike three, the umpire called. Guppy had his first out. It looked like it was going to be a good day for the Marlins. The next two batters went down just as quickly. Then it was the Marlins' turn to bat. Their first batter led off with a single. The second batter grounded out, but the third hit a double, scoring the man on first. The next two batters struck out. At the end of the first inning, 
Miami was ahead 1-0. to zero. Late fans looked for their seats as the Marlins took the field for the second inning. Kate was watching the fans walking by when she noticed something. Hey, Mike, Kate said, look over there. She pointed off to the right. It's Ned. Ned was sitting in the first row behind the first base fish tank. He seemed to be a arguing with two men dressed in suits next to him. Uncle Oliver mentioned that Ned comes to a lot of games. Mike said, I guess he gets good seats, but you know what I want to get? What? asked Kate. Some good food, Mike said. I'm hungry. I want one of those Cuban sandwiches I heard about. Que suena bien, Kate said. That sounds good. They got up from their seats and wandered toward the Taste of Miami food near the left field. After waiting in line, they ordered two Cuban sandwiches. The man behind the counter layered slices of bread with ham, pork, cheese, and pickles. Then he added some mustard and flattened the sandwich with a heavy press that melted the cheese. <clears throat> so this is a Cuban sandwich, Mike said, after he took a bite. It's great! Kate nodded. She was too busy eating to reply. And these plantain chips aren't bad either, Mike said. He popped another handful into his mouth. I think I like Miami food. After eating, Mike and Kate went back to their seats. Along the way, Mike stopped at the souvenir stand to buy a Marlins baseball and a black marker. I'm going to see if I can get Guppy's autograph after the game, he said. By the time they sat down, the Diamondbacks had tied the score one to one. About three innings later, Miami got two more runs. At the bottom of the seventh inning, the Marlins were still ahead three to one. They had one man on base and their best hitter, Felix Charles, was up. Charles didn't hold back. On the second pitch, the Miami batter popped the ball high into the air. The ball sailed over the infield and headed for the right field wall. It was going, going, gone. A home run. Behind center field, the home run statue Mike had spotted the day before began to move. Large cutouts of marlin fish twirled and circled the statue. Jets of water shot up from the side. Neon lights blinked. Pink flamingos danced. The marlins fans cheered. Wow, cool! Mike said. I like the flamingos, Kate said. When the home run statue stopped moving, the game continued. The Marlins didn't score again that inning. Kate nudged Mike. Take a look at Ned, she said. I've been watching him for a while. He's arguing with those two men again. They keep pointing at the fish tank. Mike looked over. Kate was right. Ned and his friends were staring at the fish tank and jabbering about something. That's weird, Mike said. I've got an idea. Wait here. He stood up and walked down the aisle to an open seat in the third row. A few minutes later, he returned. So what are they talking about? Kate asked. Mike shook his head. I don't know, he said. They're speaking in Spanish. Maybe you can figure it out. Kate's eyes lit up. She loved to practice her Spanish. She slipped into the same seat which Mike had just been in. Mike pretended to watch the game until Kate came back. Did you figure it out? Mike asked. Kate nodded. Yep, I got some of it, she said. They were talking about tortugas. Uncle Oliver mentioned those islands when he was telling us about the coral reefs. They said something about money, like they were arguing over an amount. What do you think it meant? Mike asked. Kate shrugged. I don't know, she said. It sounded like they were planning a trip or something. Mike was disappointed. It wasn't more interesting. He settled back into his seat to watch the rest of the game. Kate kept her eyes on Ned in between plays. Kate kept her eyes up on Ned in between plays. I see I fixed that because it sounded wonky. The Marlins were still ahead with only one inning left. Suddenly, Kate nudged Mike. Look, she said to him, over there. She pointed to the other side of home plate, near third base, near the third baseline. Don Dixon from Critters and Creatures was sitting a few rows behind the infield wall. So, we already knew Don Dixon was here, Mike said. What's the big deal? Look at what he's eating, Kate said. 
Mike spotted something yellow in Don Dixon's left hand. It looked like a package of candy. Mike watched as Don tilted it into his other hand. Three bright blue gummy sharks dropped into his palm. So here he is, in case you want to know what the author has him look like. So that's Don Dixon. So that's the end of chapter six. So now think about what, what clues Mike and Kate are getting. So now they found out about Don Dixon. Um, they were watching Ned, who was talking about money and the Tortugas. And then Don Dixon and the gummy sharks. Because remember, they found a gummy shark on the floor when they were in between the desk, remember, when they were looking for clues after the fish was missing. So that's it for now. Let's see what happens next.